Yeah. Okay, this is uh, Lester Hunt. I'm with the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program. Uh, today's date is Friday, October 14th. Um, I am joined by Scott Camille, and we're going to discuss uh, the Memorial Mile. So I go to my questions. Thanks for spending the time to do this, Scott. Sure. Um, the first question I have is, uh, when and why did the Memorial Mile start? So what happened was um, I saw a film called Arlington West. Mm. Um, and it was a film about um, a beach in California where people put up tombstones um, on the beach. Um, uh, and they called it Arlington West because it was supposed to mimic the tombstones uh, in Arlington. Uh, and uh, there was enormous um, showing of support from the public for this um, um, thing that they were doing uh, um, on the beach with the tombstones and people came to the beach from all over uh, and they wow. treated the tombstones with great reverence um, and um, they interviewed the people that were there uh, uh, for the, the video uh, and um, I saw the interviews and I thought wow this is tremendous this is really really good um, so I decided to do one in Gainesville um, and I thought that 8th Avenue would be the perfect place um, because it's a place that um, doesn't have interruptions, uh, for instance, of people's houses where cars would be coming and going. Um, right. it's, a, it, it's really a, um, a road between two parks, West Side Park and Loblolly Park. Uh, and um, um, so we chose that lo location for that reason. Um, and we said that... Um, uh, we would do this until the war ended. Um, uh, when can you give wars. a date for when it started? I believe we started it in 2007. Okay, thank you. Um, my next question is, how has the Memorial Mile changed since it was started? Well, each year it got more tombstones. <laughs> um, um, each year more people heard about it and came to visit it. Um, and um, we allowed people to write messages on the tombstones. Um, um, we had um, three tables set up, one at either end, one in the middle. And on each table were books that people could sign about how they were affected by seeing this display. And we had other books. Uh, you could come and say, my friend Bruce Smith died in uh, um, in in Iraq in 2007, where's his tombstone? And in the books, we could look up your name, um, and then it would tell us where your tombstone was, and then we would be able to walk people right to that specific tombstone. Um, um, so it was a lot of work for us, um, and and I think probably um, um, one of the most memorable things that I remember from this project was um, when we started the project, the first thing we had to do, one of the first things we had to do was make all those tombstones. Um, so we got a bunch of, uh, we decided to use the coroplast plastic um, um, because th that was, um, uh, could withstand the rain. It was small, it was light. Uh, and uh, chloroplast, the, the, the chloroplast plastic is the same material that, um, uh, yard signs are made out of. Um, um, so um, uh, um, they, they came in four by eight sheets. So that enabled us to take and make the tombstones a foot wide uh, um, and um, um, uh, oh, uh, eight inches wide and a foot high. And, and that way we could get the most tombstones out of a four by eight sheet of um, plastic. Um, uh, we, cut, we cut the tombstones, then we had a meeting over here, and there were tons of people at the meeting, and um, uh, I printed labels 
uh, uh, we went to a place called icasualties.org. It gave us the a list of all of the American service personnel who were killed in Iraq or Afghanistan um, and, and their personal information, what branch of service they were in, where they were born, um, how old they were when they died. Um, uh, what unit they were in, that kind of information. Um, so we printed that information on the labels, and then we had a meeting over here, and we put the labels on the tombstones. Um, and you know, while that was happening, one of the volunteers, um, um, her last name, I think her name was Sally Dickinson, um, um, she came across a, a, a label of a, a nephew of hers who she didn't know was dead. Um, oh, and wow. it was, it was a very moving, uh, um, experience for all of us. Um, and, um, uh, so, uh, it was a lot of work. And then of course we had to put the tombstones up and we had to put them up in order. Uh, and that was a lot of work because if you, it, uh, um, the, if you, the first thing we we did is we went out on 8th Avenue and we measured, I think it was four feet. We uh, um, And we put a little um, marker flag every four feet from the beginning going up 8th Avenue uh, to the top of the hill, crossing the street and then coming back down. And those um, made our lines for where the uh, where each row of tombstones would be. And then we had these squares that somebody made, which was like a big L. And and one part of the L would be against the curb, and the other part of the L was a long stick, um, and it had four slots. Um, so a tombstone would go at each slot, and that allowed us to make all the rows um, straight uh, um, and, and, and the same. Um, and um, um, then... Um, we tried to get people working at different areas and, and that didn't work very well because then if you missed one line, you had to take all of the other tombstones up and oh, move them. Um, um, so we had to learn how to organize it correctly, how to make sure, uh, um, each line. So let's say for a certain year, there might've been, um, uh, I think the uh, in one year there were over 900 deaths, um, and um, so uh, four tombstones goes into 900, uh, um, uh, 200 times and more, uh, and so that's how many rows there would be. So in order to make it easier, we put the flags first for each row, and then we put um, a marker up, and the first marker said um, um, Afghanistan. 2001 then the second one was afghanistan 2002 the third one was afghanistan 2003 then the next one was iraq 2003 and they went like that um, um all, all the way up and all the way down and um um uh um, so we knew how many tombstones there were for each year. So uh, uh, we count the tombs, we'd count the, the flags, and then we'd put up a marker. So for for instance, uh, um, the first one there were twelve um, deaths. So that meant three rows. Um, so we put up that the, the first sign. Then they left three rows for tombstones. Then we put up Afghanistan 2002, left a number of rows and did that. Um, um, and then um, somebody would double check to make sure we had enough lines uh, in each one before we started putting the tombstones in. And then we started putting the tombstones in. And before we could go from 2001 to 2002, um, somebody had to say, OK, uh, um, we got it right. And um, so it was a lot of work, especially in years when you had hundreds of rows of tombstones. Um, and then the the uh, the public came and the public was really, really moved um, um, by this display. Uh, and and uh, we would take people to tombstones that they asked to visit. They would write personal messages on the tombstones. Um, uh, very, very powerful. So all of those tombstones now live at my house uh, in, in the boxes. 
Um, I think I have 90 boxes of tombstones. All those tombstones are in each box. So a box might say Afghanistan 2006, box one, Afghanistan 2006, box two. Um, uh, And when you open up a box, there's a list on the top of the box that tells you what the first tombstone is, what the last tombstone is. Uh, you check to make sure everything's in proper order. Uh, and then um, setting them up um, uh, would take um, a bunch of volunteers. So one person would be holding the square and two other people would be putting the tombstones in that four slots of the square. Um, and then somebody else would be standing up, looking at the master sheet, making sure that the names are right and in the right order. And we'd start setting up around 11 o'clock at night on Friday night, and we'd finish that setup around 7 a.m. Saturday morning. So we had 100 volunteers that would work from 10 o'clock at night on Friday night until 7 a.m. Saturday morning working all through the night, setting up those tombstones. And in the dirt where we had to put the tombstones, there were red ants. So people were getting bitten. Um, um, a, a lot of people were old and it was hard for them to be down there and doing that kind of work. Uh, um, it, was a, it, it, it was a large project. It took a lot of volunteers. It took a lot of work, um, but it was very, very successful. Um, and um, it gave us the most um, interaction of any of the stuff that we we do like we have the winter solstice concert every year um 400 people come to that and we have interaction with that but thousands of people came um to see the tombstones uh, on eighth avenue um so i'd like to know uh what kind of feedback have you received from other veterans who are not members of uh, Veterans for Peace? Almost everybody that saw it um, approved of it. And even people who didn't think the wars were wrong were, were felt that we were honoring um, their friends. Um, and, and that was a little bit hard because from our point of view, uh, these people's lives were stolen by the government. We didn't right. support the war in Afghanistan. We didn't support the war in Iraq. Um, and, and we felt that these lives were wasted. Um, and, and so um, uh, we had a little difference of opinion with some people about what the display was about, but it, it, the display was absolutely not about glorifying war. Right. right. And I might have, let me just see. Um, I just happen to have a sample tombstone um, um, that I'm going to show you. Um, and, okay. and so this is what the tombstones looked like. And the reason I have this up here is you can see what a terrible job we did cutting that top of that, <laughs> trying to make them look even. So uh, um, we, we made them over and over until we got them right. So this was an, uh, 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 an extra one, but it has the person's name the date that they died, their age at their death, what branch of service they were in, what their rank was, and where they were from. And then in the bottom is a little number that, um, um, can you see that little number? Barely. It's, uh, no, like four. So that four little four number... There? Uh, each tombstone had their own number on it, and that's how we kept track of the tombstones. So this particular tombstone, the number is A2064. And what that means is that this person was the 2064th American service person to die in Afghanistan. Um, and that's how we kept track of, of all of the tombstones. Um, and then um, when people would visit tombstones, we would put a flag in the top to indicate that the tombstone was visited and people would write messages on the tombstones. Uh, and so when when you would come down 8th Avenue and look at the tombstone, you'd see a bunch of flags on top. Uh, and those were the flags of people whose loved ones and friends had visited them. Wow. Uh, and then what happened is is one weekend we had a lot of rain. 
uh, and and the labels got messed up, um, and and um, um, so we had to get waterproof labels with waterproof ink, and and one year we had to remake like almost three thousand tombstones, um, uh, and there was a a a, a, a uh, then the, the next year it rained and we knew we were going to have problems, and a a um, t-shirt shop here in Gainesville, um, I'll think of the name of it. Um, um, uh, they shut down their shop and they allowed us to bring all the tombstones in and put them on the dryers they use for like when they print the ink on the t-shirts they go through dryers they let us put the the tombstones through all of the dryers is, um, is that uh, atlas screen printing no um i can oh. tell you who it is hold on one second that would be great thank you yes Here it is. Aesthetic print and design mm. is the name of the t-shirt. Um, um, aesthetic print and design. Um, and Jonathan Hamilton um, and um, Casey Donnelly were the owners. They still are the owners. And actually, they still make our T-shirts for us. Um, they shut down their shop. Um, and so all of these tombstones, uh, um, they had the holes in them. Uh, um, so you can put the, the, let me move this out of the way so I can see. So we can put the, the sticks in them so that they would stick in the ground. Um, and um, um, so the first thing we had to do before we put the tombstones through the dryers is with a hand blower, the, the, uh, an air hose, blow the water out of all of the flues of all of those thousands of tombstones. Oh, so it was several days worth of work and then running them through the dryer to dry them and then finishing off the drying with hand drying, then putting them back in order and putting them back in the boxes. Uh, and before they could go through the the dryer, we had to remove all of the legs um, um, because they didn't want metal going through there. So we had to remove all the legs and then we had to put all the legs back in. Um, so it was a tremendous effort, a lot of work, and we had just tons of volunteers to help us do that. Um, well, you've already answered my other question, which was uh, about the physical demands of setting up the event. Um, so, well, I want to talk a little bit more about that because the the, this, the display was up for uh, um, all day Saturday all day Sunday, then Monday, which would be Memorial Day, until sundown, and then at sundown, we would take all of those tombstones up. And so all the volunteers would come back, those tombstones would come out of the ground, they'd be wiped down and put back in the boxes in the, in the order that they were supposed to be. Oh then they would God. all come to my house, we would have the volunteers come over here, it would take several weekends, we opened up each box, we made sure the tombstones were all clean and that they were all in the correct order. And then we put mothballs in the boxes, sealed the boxes and stored them away until next year. Um, and um, um, the, uh, the amount of work having all of those people come to pick the tombstones up, to clean the tombstones, to put them back in the boxes, um, was a lot of work. And then during the three days, um, we had people on site to take care of the tombstones. So we had three tables set up, one at either end and one in the middle. Uh, and um, so two people at each table. So you could come to a table and say, my friend Bruce Smith died in Afghanistan in 2007, take me to his tombstone. So we'd look it up in the book where that tombstone is, and then we would walk, one person would walk that person to the tombstone, and one person would stay at the table. 
So uh, normally there would be one person at each table, and then the second person's job, if they weren't showing somebody a tombstone, was walking up and down 8th Avenue, and the wind from the cars would blow tombstones over. It was their job to put those tombstones and get them back. People would throw cigarettes out of their fucking cars and stuff like that. Um, and, and so people's job was to walk up and down, pick up the pick up the dirt, the trash, and keep things clean, keep the tombstones up, and take people to the tombstones. Um, so it was a huge effort, um, and people liked their jobs. People liked doing it, um, and um, we had so much interaction with the public. Um, um, the first year that we did it. Um, somebody came and uh, with a truck and ran over the tombstones um, oh because uh, um, because they thought it was an anti-war demonstration and they didn't approve of it. Um, um, one night, somebody came and pulled tombstones out of the ground and just threw them in the woods. So that meant we had to keep um, guards for the tombstones. So we had to keep six people on site 24-7. Uh, uh, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. We had people walking up and down, taking care of the tombstones and protecting them from people who were trying to hurt the tombstones. Yeah, that's, that's uh, somebody willing to do that just to support war. That's uh, really something. Yeah, it didn't make it just didn't make any sense to us why they would be angry and try to hurt the tombstones but um um um, after the first year that didn't happen anymore because uh, our people were on guard and we were aggressive about that that's good yeah um is there anything else you'd like to add well now i have all of the tombstones and we said we would keep doing it until the wars ended and the wars ended um and that was part of our problem uh, um but um we started in 2007 and, and and so then um 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 in in like in in 2019 um that's 12 years more um um so all of us that were doing that got a lot older um, and so our volunteers were older and it became harder for people to get down on their hands and knees in the middle of the night and put those tombstones in. And then in the daytime, because of climate change, it started getting hotter and hotter. And on our, our last year, we had three people that had to get medical help because they had heat stroke. Three of our people who were taking care of the tombstones had heat stroke. And then I felt that... Um, I'm the leader, uh, and I felt that a good leader wouldn't put his people through that. So I decided that um, um, as soon as this war, these wars are over, we're going to quit that because it, it's just it's not fair to the to make the volunteers put in those kind of hours and be out there in the hot sun and suffer. Um, so um, it, it was good for those wars to be over because I was wearing out my people and I was running out of people. And actually the last two years, we would not have been able to um, accomplish it without help. And um, James Ingle, and let me just you know, get this correct too. Uh, um, um, James Ingle brought a bunch of volunteers from the uh, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, number 1205, which is a local one. And so they had all of these big guys come in the middle of the night. They'd show up at one o'clock in the morning and they'd start working till five, six in the morning, putting those tombstones in for us. Um, and without their help, we never would have been able to finish it. So the last two years was really uh, um, uh, uh, the cooperation between Veterans for Peace and the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers for us to uh, uh, accomplish our mission and put those um, displays up. And and the ground got harder and harder and it was packed really hard. And in the end, you can see the tombstone has two pegs on the bottom um, in the end, 
we had to come out there with ice picks and hammers and make the holes to put the tombstones into the holes because trying to push the tombstones in from the top would bend the top um, uh, and it would hurt the tombstones because the ground was too hard to push the tombstones into the ground. Um, so it became really a lot of hard work. Um, and, and having these union guys come out in the middle of the night with their tools and make holes for us um, helped us to accomplish that mission. Um, um, so that never could have happened without um, James Ingle and the uh, uh, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers 1205. Um, um, that, that, and that was really important. And, and, and I should have mentioned that first on uh, about the help that we had from them. Uh, how do you um, look for volunteers, like people who may not be veterans, but are interested in helping your organization? How do you find people like that? Well, some people would come um, and they'd see the display and say, hey, how can I help? And so I kept track of their names and stuff. Um, some people just wanted to come and help take down. Some people wanted to come and help put up. Um, and I also um, um, put a lot of pressure on my members. Uh, um, this was our project. It was our mission. And it was our duty to accomplish our mission. And we said we were going to do it. And that meant that we had to do it. And I'm, I'm a Marine Corps sergeant. Um, and, and, and I run a tight ship. Um, and um, um, we just had wonderful volunteers, and we were able to get that work done. Okay. Um, now, all of those tombstones live here. Uh, and uh, all those boxes of tombstones are here. We don't put them up on 8th Avenue anymore. Um, um, I, I would like to see something happen to them, um, and, and I told Paul that, that if they ever wanted to do something with at the oral history project or, or something, uh, 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 some kind of a historical thing at the University of Florida, I would donate all those tombstones if they would make use of them. So that, that those tombstones represent history. They're here sitting in boxes. Nobody sees them anymore. Um, I would like to be able to have some way for them to um, be used. Uh, this sounds like it could be useful charting the um, ups and downs of death in the conflict. Like if you could make a graph, I could see somebody doing that. So we do have a graph that we that we used, and and and, oh. and, and actually, let me um, show you stuff behind me. So you can probably see those charts behind me. You can't yes. See what they say, but. So, so um, uh, let me try to explain this chart to you. So the, 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 the main part of the chart is the watch list. I told you we had six people on site at all times, uh, two people at the east end, two people in the middle, two people at the west end. And these are the names of the people who would show up, what time they're supposed to show up, starting at 6 a.m., going all the way down until um, we take down on the third day. So this was the watch list of all of the volunteers who, so um, I knew who was supposed to be there at what time and who was supposed to relieve who. So if somebody said, hey, Scott, my relief didn't come, boom, I'd look at my chart, I'd call that person up and say, hey, where are you? You're supposed to be there. Uh, um, and then if they, they were sick or they couldn't come, then I had to find somebody else to fill that in. Um, so um, I had, um, 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 uh, uh, lists of names of, of um, um, uh, who who I could call. So uh, now I'm going to go to this list up here. So this first list um, tells you those boxes of tombstones. Who's in charge of each box? So here, Afghanistan 01, Kirk and Janet and Mark were in charge of that. Uh, and so it so when the boxes would come, we had people who were in charge of those boxes. These were the people that came. These were the people on their teams that helped put those tombstones into the ground. Then um, before we did that, this was the setup layout. 
So the first thing that happened is uh, um, those first flags would go up. And and, and at, that started 11 o'clock at night. Bill would come with his team and they put every four feet one of those flags. Um, and then um, 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 somebody else would come with, with a flag wagon behind them so they could have the flags to do. Then the next uh, team would come up and they would put the year layout. Afghanistan 2001, Afghanistan 2002, by counting those the flags that were up, um, and and um, um, then the next people came and they would do the box layout. So we have a trucks full of these boxes. Someone's going to come down Eighth Avenue and drop a box off of tombstones at each place that are supposed to be dropped off. So that was the uh, um, 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 uh, uh, um, people who who dropped off who, who marked where the boxes would go then this was the the final layout check to make sure that we had enough flags for each year of the, the amount of deaths that we had um and then um, um the cost of war set up uh, who's in charge of delivering the boxes in the trucks um and and who brought the boxes um from my house to the event and, and what boxes they brought of tombstones so we could keep track of everybody. And then the, the tombstones that had flags on top of them, well, well, David and Judy would come at 5 a.m. and they would they had a list of all the tombstones that got flags on top of them. And at 5 a.m. they would go down 8th Avenue and put American flags on top of the tombstones that they were supposed to do. Um, and then um, um, we had water coolers at each tent and who who was supposed to bring those water coolers and who was supposed to bring the ice and who was supposed to bring all the other materials was all listed there and then uh, uh, this final one is um uh, uh the, so this says afghanistan 2000, uh, 2001 um um there are um three rows um and there were 11 deaths uh, in afghanistan 2002 12, 12 rows, 48 deaths. 2003, um, 12 rows, 45 deaths. 2000, um, so this tells Afghanistan, Afghanistan, and Afghanistan, Iraq. So this told us how many deaths for each year, how many rows we would need uh, uh, for each year. Uh, um, and um, 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 uh, the th this would tell me how many um, um, rows we would have in each box so, um, so we knew where to place the boxes. So all of that stuff was laid out like this. And with, with this thing right here, I organized how everything got done. That's a very impressive chart. And so um, if somebody would ever take those tombstones to do something with them historically, they would also get the charts. Okay. Uh, and, and you can see, so I was a Marine Corps sergeant. I was a platoon sergeant. Uh, um, and so the Marine Corps taught me, okay, this is our mission. And, and in order to accomplish our mission, um, we break the mission down into the steps that are required to get it done. And then we take care of those steps one at a time until we're done. And so using that is how I did all of this from my Marine Corps training. Wow. But instead of having Marines, I just had volunteers. And That's a lot so of them were veterans. And um, 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 so, so the... Uh, I, 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 you can see the names. Some of them are red and some of them are blue. The red ones are veterans. The blue ones are um, civilians. Uh, um, so, so for instance, I'm a veteran. My wife is a civilian. But we, we had to make sure that we always had veterans um, at, uh, at each time. We never had all blue. We made sure that there was always veterans uh, intermixed with everything, um, um, so there always be a veteran. Um, okay. And, and um, um, these are my supporters. And and um, so, um, for instance, um, um, you know who Paul is? 
So here's Paul Paul's Jesus. name. Yeah. Uh, um, there's Sheila's name right next to Paul. Paul's dad, Pablo, would come in from New Mexico, and he worked too. Wow. We had people coming from out of state to help us work. So uh, every year, and Paul's father was a Marine, um, uh, Pablo. So every year, Pablo would come in, and he'd be part of our team. Wow. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say before I end the recording? I guess that I'm um, very thankful to the union members that helped us, and I'm very thankful to all the volunteers. Uh, I'm very thankful to all the public that came and gave us encouragement. Um, and um, um, uh, um, I'm just thankful for the community support uh, that Veterans for Peace has. Okay. Well, thank you, Scott, and um, for doing this. Thanks for your time. Right. We have uh, Scott Camille, and um, he is uh, adding to the previous interview. So, so thank you, Scott. Oh, thank you. And I'm sorry that I forgot about it, but the, the support that we got from the community was so strong that um, the city of Gainesville renamed that stretch of 8th Avenue Memorial Mile. They painted the curbs purple uh, and they put historical markers at either end. Um, and and um, so when you come down 8th Avenue, you see the purple sign says Memorial Mile um, uh, um, from either end that you uh, enter 8th Avenue. Um, and and um, Commissioner Harvey Ward, it was his idea um, to do that. So he, he made a motion at the city. It was unanimous. And they renamed that section of the road. They put up historical markers. So anybody that goes to 8th Avenue now, they see those purple curbs uh, and they see those two historical markers. And and we are very grateful um, to Harvey Ward and the city of Gainesville um, um, for recognizing um, our work um, and the importance of it. Is there anything else you want to add, Scott? Or... Um, I'm sorry, that's all I can think of right this okay. minute. That's plenty. Um, we got some some great information. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and 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 for if you ever wanted to add to it, for instance, by coming to my house and photographing all of those boxes that are stored in the shed or opening up a box and looking inside of them um, and taking some pictures of that. So uh, um, to make it uh, uh, um, uh, uh, a little stronger, you're more than welcome to do that. Okay. Okay. That's all I can think of. And thank you so much for being patient. No problem. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Scott. Bye, my friend.